Kwasi here. In my journey of deciphering ancient teachings and knowledge, there have been many conflicts that I haven't yet been able to piece together. One book that really conflicted me was a forbidden book that was intentionally taken out of canonical scriptures around the year 400 AD, known as the Book of Enoch. The Book of Enoch is the oldest Jewish apocalyptic text, the first book of which, known as the Book of Watches, was thought to have been written around 300 BCE. Now, another huge conflict that also confuses me to this day is concerning the true creation of the universe. For example, the Bible's genealogical records and Genesis 1st estimates that the universe is around 6,000 years old, whereas modern science tells us that our current universe is around 13.8 billion years old. Now, quantum science is also saying that this universe is just one of many multiverses which are spontaneously formed and die, kind of like a bubble popping. This theory quite closely resembles ancient Buddhist knowledge. The Buddha taught that a universe lasts for a period of what's known as a kalpa. When asked by a disciple how long a kalpa is, the Buddha gave a very astounding, curious analogy. He said, imagine a huge empty cube at the beginning of a kalpa, approximately 16 miles on each side. Once every 100 years, you insert a tiny mustard seed into the cube. Now, according to the Buddha, the huge cube will be filled even before the Kalpa ends. Now, going back to the book of Enoch, the book of Genesis says that Enoch lived 365 years before he was taken by God. And the text reads that Enoch walked with God and he was no more, for God took him, which is interpreted as Enoch entering heaven alive in some Jewish and Christian traditions. What's so fascinating about the book of Enoch is this. The book of Enoch contains detailed accounts of the actions of the Watchers, a group of fallen angels who descended to earth and imparted forbidden knowledge to humanity. This knowledge, while initially providing humans with various skills and insights, ultimately led to wickedness and sin. In Enoch 8.1, it said, And Azazel taught men how to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates, and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them, and bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony, and the beautifying of the eyelids, and all kinds of costly stones and all coloring tinctures. In Enoch 8.3, Shemihaza taught enchantments and root cuttings, Amoros, the resolving of enchantments, Barakiel taught astrology, Kokobel, the constellations, Ezekiel, the knowledge of the clouds, Arachiel, the sign of the earth, Shamsil, the signs of the sun, Sereel, the course of the moon. In today's video, I want to share with you one powerful insight that is embedded within the book of Enoch that nobody has ever deciphered before, that with the correct application has the potential to change your life forever. Let's get started. One of the most fascinating things about the book of Enoch is the mention of Enoch not in the book itself, but in other books, like the book of Genesis. So in the Hebrew Bible, Enoch is mentioned very briefly in Genesis 5 as part of the genealogy leading from Adam to Noah. Enoch is the son of Jared and the father of Methuselah. He is described very, very notably in Genesis 5, 24. And what's interesting is he's described as Enoch walked faithfully with God, then he was no more because God took him away. This is a very cryptic message, no doubt, but it really led to a lot of speculation and interpretation. The most accepted and intriguing of which is that Enoch was taken into heaven by God without dying, just alive. And all due to his close personal relationship with God which leads me to understanding the very first theme from the book of Enoch itself, which actually appears in Enoch 3. And the quote that describes this theme of transformation from Enoch 3 is in 4 to 5, and it says, When Enoch ascended to the heavens, his flesh was turned to flame, his veins to fire, his eyelashes to flashes of lightning, his eyeballs to flaming torches, and whom God placed on a throne next to the throne of glory received after this heavenly transformation the name Metatron. Metatron is the name of an angel, and it appears that Enoch was transformed into the quality of an angel. What's very, very interesting to note here is this transformation, though it may not be direct, its indirect interpretation is also very, very interesting because it suggests that when we raise our vibration or our state of consciousness, whatever you want to call it, our vibration is raised, we start to 
develop angelic qualities. So one thing this really reminds me of is a study done by David R. Hawkins on the levels of consciousness. So I'm gonna pull this up over here. This levels of consciousness describes the different vibrations or frequencies of consciousness that we as human beings can exist. At. The lowest level are guilt, apathy, shame, the highest level is that of enlightenment. And highest level attainable in the human realm is the level of 1000, which is, is occupied by the greatest avatars like Jesus Christ, the Buddha, Zoroaster, Krishna, all of these high avatars that you can think of. They really are beyond this earthly realm in the world and not of it. Now, what's even more interesting though, is I remember being on a forum and I saw a deeper study into the states of consciousness. These levels are available in the human realm. What's beyond the human realm at the level of 50,000 are archangels like Michael, Gabriel. Uh, even above that, the level of infinity is God or the source of creation. So the human is limited to the level of 1,000 and this is a logarithmic scale, meaning when you go from what's a tenfold increase in energy, okay? So you'll notice that when you're at very, very low levels of energy or a very low state of consciousness, life appears very, very hard. It's very, very hard to get yourself to take actions. You are kind of stuck in apathy or anger and it's, everything just feels a lot more frictionful, right? But if you start to raise your level of consciousness, you notice that things that you've really wanted for a long period of time, they start to get achieved by itself. You know, you don't have to put in extra effort. Things that you've always wanted, they no longer matter anymore. And because they don't matter anymore, they almost get achieved by themselves. So one really key thing I want you to take away from this, actually two key parts I want you to take away from this part of uh, the Book of Enoch is the very first part, which is actually from the Genesis itself, the concept of developing a close personal relationship with God, okay? So you develop a relationship with God. Now, what does that mean? If you want to create the circumstances that you'd like to see in your life, you want to create your reality, you want to experience the life that you want, what fundamentally needs to happen is you need to step away beyond this current state of things. I need to step away from this current state of affairs to be able to envision a better state of affairs, a better tomorrow. And when I envision this better tomorrow, I trust and have faith that it is going to happen. How do you have this trust and faith? You develop a close personal relationship with something that is greater than you. What do I mean by that? Within every single one of us, there is a guardian angel or a higher self, okay? So if I envision myself at my ideal destination, let's say I'm making a certain amount of money in my business and I want to make more money because I want to retire and I want to experience a life of freedom, I envision who I would be as I am effortlessly experiencing that freedom in my life. And I almost develop a relationship with that higher self, right? So let's say make 30, $40,000 a month, $20,000 a month doing what I love every single day. I envision that version of myself almost occupying this current body, right? I am shifting my identity and becoming that higher self. And so I imagine how would the, the ideal self do this task right now? If I'm at my job right now and I'm dreaming of a business and something that gives me freedom in my life, financial freedom, I imagine this 20K a month version of Quasi, what would he do? What would that ideal self do? And just trust that everything that unfolds from this moment forwards, your ideal self is taking care of you. Trust that everything is happening all in accordance with what was supposed to happen instead of fighting and resisting it every day. In this manner, you already develop a close personal relationship with something much greater than you. If you only know of yourself and who you are right now, you are limited to the current confines of your reality, right? If you only know struggle and you know yourself to be the kind of person who struggles, the kind of person for whom everything comes very, very difficult, you always have to struggle to earn your place under the sun, to make money, and you always get setbacks. Oh, things always happen to you then that's the kind of, those are, those are the kinds of circumstances you're going to manifest in your life, right? The other thing I want you to take away is to know a surefire way of where your set vibration point or state of consciousness is, is by looking at your God view. How do you view God? Do you view God as fair or unfair and punishing? Do you view God as loving and giving or scarce and taking away, right? Your God view determines your state of consciousness in this chart. 
So, this chart actually shows you the different God views at different levels of consciousness. The cool thing is, if you begin to choose this God view right now, you immediately raise yourself up to that level, that state of consciousness. This was absolutely crucial for me because I always viewed God as very, very punishing and only blesses a select few, but not me. I had to change that view. And I also had to change not just my God view, but also my world view, because I viewed the world as a place where I couldn't become successful until I was chosen or I was lucky. And that's why I was stuck in a job that I hated and I would have to you know, do for the rest of my life for the next 40 years. But I changed that God view and my world view and it took me from doing something that I would hate for the rest of my life to making these videos and doing it full time and making the kind of income that I want to make. And all of this, this freedom was possible because I began at the end. I looked at the higher self, who I would be. I looked at how that higher self would view God and chose to do it right now in this moment. The second crucial thing I want you to take away from this is in understanding our states of consciousness and how it relates to the challenges that we're perceiving, the, the challenges that we're experiencing in this moment right now. So what most people try to do is anytime an obstacle or a challenge comes their way, they immediately fall asleep. They're like, oh no, another bill, oh no, IRS, or oh no, you know, something with your kid maybe, something with your family, something's going on, and all of a sudden you fall asleep, you're like, oh no this bad thing is happening. In that moment, it is imperative that you wake up because your response to that challenge is what will dictate the rest of your life, okay? So at that moment, if you were to wake up and simply perceive this challenge for what it is, this is a test that's coming my way to see if my conviction is strong enough, to see if my faith in God or the highest, the universe is strong enough, right? Because if I can persist in my internal world and have it be completely untouched, unfettered by whatever's happening outside, then the universe will say, this guy is bulletproof. It will have no choice but to reflect. There is just no choice. If you keep holding up the image internally in the mirror of reality for long enough, the reflection has to happen. It's just a matter of time when. The question then is when, not if. It's only if, if your response to whatever's happening is determined by what's happening. But if your response is completely independent of what's happening because you've made it your choice and you stay in that conviction, then that's exactly what's going to be reflected. And I want to give you an example to exemplify this. Uh, it's very, very uh, interesting that this is the month of May right now as I'm making this video, May of 2024, because May of 2019, my life was completely different. That was probably the worst month of my life because I had just graduated from college and I was supposed to go full time into my, into my job that I had a summer internship for and they gave me a job offer and everything and cushy, comfy health insurance. So I, I told my parents like, hey, I wanna pursue this business, this online coaching business, help people transform their lives and make videos because this is what I'm really passionate about. And they said, you're stupid for doing that because you have a safe, secure job and you're not even making money with this online business. And so I went against them and I still doubled down on my business and that month of May, I was supposed to make 5K, my first $5,000 month, which would have been what I would make from my job. And uh, my, my condition with my parents was, if I make 5K a month, you can't give me shit, you have to leave me alone. They're like, okay, cool. There's no way you're gonna make it, but okay, cool. And so I didn't. The month of May was my absolute worst month because prior to which I was making around two to 3K a month, maybe. And uh, the month of May, I made absolutely zero. Uh, I didn't expect that. It, it, kind of took me aback. I remember, you know, just feeling so much pressure that month. I, I remember just sitting down in my bedroom floor, just crying every single day. And I would do all of this marketing, make all of these videos, work like 12 hours a day, get on phone calls with prospective clients and they would just say, no, 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 I don't want to work with you. I don't want to work with you. No, no, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. And just uh, get rejection after rejection. And it completely destroyed me. And I just remembered feeling this pressure. And I just said, you know, that there was one night of the dark soul, dark night of the soul, whatever it is. And I said, fuck it, I don't care anymore. Like, whatever happens, happens. I'm just gonna give it my all. And I felt a weight drop from my shoulders. I lowered my importance, how much meaning I was putting into all of these outcomes. And as soon as I reduced and lowered that importance, as soon as I surrendered to God and the universe, and I trusted that something was gonna happen, immediately my state of consciousness elevated. I was no longer in that state of desiring, but I went up to the level of courage. 
And as soon as that happened, the following month, I did my first ever $7,000 month. Never done that before. And then the month after, I did my first 12K month. And then the month after, August of 2019, I'll never forget this, I did my first ever 21K month. And I was over the moon. And that month, I got married to my then girlfriend. Why I'm telling you this story is, anytime you are experiencing challenges in your life, the first thing you must do is respond to it as though it's a test. This is a test. You have to remind yourself in time that this is a test. But the other thing you must do is simply lower your importance, lower the meaning that you give to it. Because instead of trying to deal directly with the challenge or the test that you have, focus instead on where am I putting excessive meaning or importance where am I getting attached that's causing this obstacle to come up? The obstacles that you're noticing are a result of your own importance. I was noticing all of these obstacles in my reality because my importance to getting that 5K month was so high. And every single day, my dad would come into my room and be like, did you make any money yet? Did you make any money yet? No, you didn't. See, you're wasting your life. It's not gonna work. No one's gonna buy your shit. This online business thing is a scam. Everything is a scam. I'm glad I did it because, well, now I am where I'm at, living the life that I, it, it's beyond my imagination. And to live a life that's beyond your wildest dreams, you have to trust in the unknown and take that leap. Have that faith. Trust in the unknown, that's what faith is. And that's the next part that we're gonna get to that is going to make this a lot more sense, which is the visions that Enoch had, okay? And how that is applicable to you and me and how you can use that to tap into that intuitive source that we call God. So the second part to understanding the Book of Enoch and how it's applicable to you in order to create your dream reality is understanding Enoch's visions. So if we go to Enoch 14, 8 to 25, it said that, and I went into the visions of sleep and I saw as it were a building built of crystals and between those crystals, tongues of living fire. My spirit saw the girdled which girt that house of fire, and on its four sides were streams full of living fire, and they girt that house. And then, in 18 to 22, and I looked and saw therein a lofty throne. Its appearance was as crystal, and the wheels thereof as the shining sun. And there was the vision of cherubim, and from underneath the throne came streams of flaming fire, so that I could not look thereon. In all of these, you can see that Enoch is having these visions because he's connected to a source. When you elevate your level of your state of consciousness, you start to become connected to this source. The higher we go, the closer we come to God. When we go from zero to 100 to 200, 300, 400, the more we start to become available to intuitive guidance. If you're very, very low, all you can think about is what you don't have and how life is limited. There is no room, there is no space for vision, for intuition. So connecting to source, raising your state of consciousness immediately makes you privy to having intuition. How visions helped me in my life or intuition helped me in my life was when I wanted to have that freedom that I wanted, the financial freedom, making 20K a month and living the life that I wanted to live and not focusing on what I didn't want, being stuck in a toxic environment at my job, the immediate intuitive guidance I had was start a YouTube channel. It screamed at me for eight months until I acted on it on December 31st of 2017. I remember filming my first video and being so deathly afraid to put it out, afraid what, what, what my friends are gonna say, what people in my life were gonna think, but I just did it anyways because that was the intuitive guidance I had and I knew that if I didn't do it, I would regret it for the rest of my life. So I went ahead and did that. When I did that, I didn't know how to monetize the YouTube channel. I asked for guidance and I just trusted and had faith that something would show up when the time is right. But in that meantime, I just did what I knew. A huge problem with most people is, when they don't know what to do, they keep focusing on what they don't know. When you focus on what you don't know, you're going to get more things you don't know. You're going to get more uncertainty. If you are in your business right now, and let's say you had a goal to grow your business, or you want to make more money, and you feel lost in your life, you know, you don't know what direction to take, you don't know if you want to start a business, or what, whatever it is you want to do, all you have to do is ask yourself, what's one thing I can do right now to help me move one step closer towards the goal? Because you're here right now and your goal is over there and you just don't know what the middle part looks like. If you don't know what the middle part looks like, just focus on the first step from your current situation that you can take. So for me, the first step from my current situation wasn't doing something that I didn't know. What I did know was, hey, just start a YouTube channel. Just start making YouTube videos regularly. And most people, when they run a marathon, 
they're thinking about how to finish the seventh mile or 233rd mile of the marathon instead of thinking about that next step. Just focus on putting one foot in front of the other while you think and dream about the goal. This leads me to understanding the fundamental differences between belief and faith. Most people, the more logical people like myself, we operate on belief. Belief is trust in the known. You have belief when you have evidence, but what if you don't have evidence? What if you're wanting to do something that's been never done before? And chances are, if you want to create a life that you're proud of, the reality that you would like to live in, it's not been done before. So only you have the blueprint to doing that but you have to uncover that through self-inquiry, through self-awareness, which requires faith, which is trust in the unknown and the unseen. Belief is trust in the known and the seen. Faith is trust in the unknown and the unseen. So we need to have trust in the unknown and unseen that things will become clearer. So imagine uncovering an unknown terrain. As I walk, put one foot in front of the other and I keep walking into this unknown terrain. I don't know where I'm going. Chances are I'm gonna take some missteps. That's okay. As long as I don't make a big enough mistake to wipe myself out, that's okay. And chances are, if you're not in the wilderness, you're not gonna do that. You're not gonna do things silly enough to wipe yourself out but do take risks as in going into unknown territory, failing, because you don't learn a lot from success, you only learn from failure. So put one foot in front of the other and move into that uncharted terrain that you call your life. No one else has the blueprint for what you should be doing, only you do, but you have to trust that voice inside of your head. To hear that voice inside of your head, you have to continually get quiet every single day. One of the main ways I like to do this is through meditation, spending 15, 20 minutes just still quiet, just listening, just being, not trying to do something, not trying to control something, just simply being quiet. All of these holy books have a mention of the contemplative nature of all of these avatars. Jesus talked about it, the Buddha talked about it, Krishna, Zarasta, all of these avatars, they talked about it. When you become quiet, you're immediately removing the clouds. David R. Hawkins said, when we remove the clouds, the sun is free to shine forth. Our natural state is the ultimate state, but there's a lot of garbage we've picked up from this lifetime, from previous lifetimes that we're working on shedding, the karma that we're working on undoing. And that's why surrender, dropping importance, that was so crucial for me in that month of May. The key I want you to take away from this is when you have a goal, you simply have to set the goal and allow yourself to have. That's one of the fundamental conditions to creating anything, which is your goal might be really Really, really far in advance and when I started on this journey one of my biggest goals was making $20,000 a month with a business that I can run from my laptop because then I could travel the world and do what I wanted and not be bound to going into a job that I don't like and so I set that goal and I allowed myself to daydream I allowed myself to have that if you can't allow yourself to have it at least allow yourself to daydream to dream about it to say hey this is nice I'm just experiencing this that's okay too do this continually visualize it every single day feel it in every single bone in your body every single morning every single night that's what I did the second part is act on your intuition any kind of guidance you get keeps repeatedly coming to you and the difference between intuition and just impulse is very simple. Impulse is you see a shiny object, and a lot of business owners see it these days. They go on YouTube, they go on social media, they go on Facebook. They're like, oh, the new ad strategy. Oh, TikTok this. You know, new business strategy. Let's do that. They very, very quickly jump to a new opportunity. For me, I know the difference between intuition and impulse because intuition, it just feels right. But more than feeling right, it just haunts you. The next time you want to test the difference between intuition and impulse, wait for a week. See if you think about it again. I never act on things the first time I see them. The very first time I see something, I immediately assume that this is just a thought that came up and it's trying to distract me from my mission. I already know what to do. Then if that thought keeps coming up again and again and again and again, by the fifth time, I'm like, there's shit, there's something to this. I have to address it. And that's the fundamental difference. And I can promise you, if you act on intuition every single day, you train it to become stronger and it becomes more and more available for you to use. And the next thing you know, it's gonna lead you to places that you've never even dreamed of. Your life is gonna become something out of your wildest dreams, even beyond. I believe the best way to make a permanent transformation in your life, your external reality, is through changing your internal reality. Presenting the correct image to that mirror. Learning how to create that image in your mind's eye hold it, feel it for long enough. The main way to permanently change your internal reality isn't through changing your thoughts or your feelings or your beliefs, but it's by changing who you identify as. So stop trying to change what you are doing, 
rather change who you're being. If you change yourself fundamentally from your very core in who you're being, then the doing will naturally follow. And then, as a consequence of that, the having will follow as well. And so the main way to do all of this is through shifting your identity. I recently made an identity shifting bootcamp, which is available to all of our reality created newsletter, those who've subscribed to it, but I would love for this to be available for you. It's a five video series that outlines the complete process of identity shifting. If you want to access that, it's right here. You can click right here. It's completely free for you to access. There's a lot of other bonuses that I can also share with you in our newsletter. Uh, I like to send two to three emails per week, just sharing my personal life and my thoughts that I can't really share on the channel. But immediately upon opting in, you're going to get the free identity shifting bootcamp and I hope you benefit from it. So it's right here and I'll see you in this next page right now.